Και τώρα δίνω το λόγο στον κύριο Πίτερ Οικονομίδη που θα μας μιλήσει για το ενηγματικό τίτλο «Είναι για όλους μας». Έχετε το λόγο. Ευχαριστώ πάρα πολύ. Λοιπόν, get this guys, I've just been introduced by somebody called Shark Bouchard. And I got a name, Peter Economides, written in Greek, right? <laughs> But I'm going to speak English. <laughs> um, you'll be thankful, because if I spoke in Greek, you'd understand how badly I speak. I'm very fond of relating one particular tale. Paragila mia salata me bazuria. Eftichos den ichane. My relationship with, with Cyprus goes back, goes back quite a while. I've been, I've been doing a lot of work in Cyprus over the past 20 years or so. Um, the Bank of Cyprus, Skepsto Yinete, if you remember that, that was something that I did. Sigma Television with my very good friend Andis Khatikostis, who unfortunately is my late friend, Andis Khatikostis. The city of Limassol, I did a branding project there. I've done quite a bit of work in Cyprus. And I've come to know Cyprus rather well, and I'm incredibly fond of this island, especially when it rains like this. This, this feels like London, it's ridiculous. <laughs> um, but I want to read you something that I wrote um, in 2013. And this is what it says. Cyprus is not the miracle the Cypriots are. There's no such thing as a financial crisis. It's the result of a social crisis, a values crisis, a confidence crisis, a how we feel about ourselves crisis. And I'm starting to feel that the current European crisis is a crisis of democracy, that the real deficit is a democratic deficit. Last week, Cyprus gave the world some of the most cliff-hanging television I've seen in a long, long time, part drama, part comedy, soap opera, an epic serial, but tragic, always tragic, because it was the story of the collapse of the Cyprus miracle, and the treatment that was handed out from the north looked like Protestant punishment. But I've learned something about the Cypriots. You will be back with another miracle, because Cyprus is not the miracle. The Cypriots are. And I wrote that in 2013. That was a little bit, uh, about a week after the crisis, the 13th of March, I believe it was. And today I'm in this incredible building, which I haven't seen the likes of. You know, designed by Jean Nouvel, um, this incredible place, which is one of the most remarkable buildings I've walked through. Thanks for the tour, Elena. And I went upstairs onto the third floor, and I could just feel the energy inside that, that room with people reading. It was amazing, unbelievable. So congratulations, really congratulations. We've heard about the phenomenal stuff that has been done between the Sylvia Ioannou Foundation and the university. And we heard it from one of the people intimately involved with that. Um, I think that we owe a huge round of applause to, to what these people have done together. Absolutely phenomenal. But if that's what they've done, I'm going to talk about how we're going to talk about this to the world. How we're going to present all of this new stuff, this new thinking to the world. And I'll also talk about the bigger ambition of creating a platform that is open to all humanity. That we can take this kind of stuff and let humanity share with us. Not just our history, but their own history. So I'll talk a bit about that too. Very timely, a couple of days ago, I came across this article, um, Athens in Pieces, The Art of Memory. And what it says at the top is, the, the ancient city is also a living one, and it still has plenty to tell us, if we want to listen. And that's the key point. If we want to listen. History has so much to tell us, if we want to listen. And then, within that article, I came across this quote, which I love. History can provide us with breathing space, perhaps even an oxygen tank, where we can fill our lungs before plunging back into the blips, tweets, 
clicks and endless breaking news updates that populate our days, and where we are distracted from distraction by distraction, as T.S. Eliot said. By looking into the past, we can see further and more clearly into the present. And I think that's quite phenomenal. I'm going to talk a bit about my past. My past involves an island called Imvros, which today is part of Turkey. My grandmother on the right-hand side, my grandfather next to her, left the island in 1922 as refugees. They had to. And they went to South Africa, of all places. I remind you, there's no internet to check the weather in those days. And they had no friends who they could call to find out if it was true that lions roamed the streets of Johannesburg. They got onto a boat and they left. That's my mother in front. She died last year at the age of 92, so that photograph must be 89 years old. It's a long time ago. And that's my grandfather's first business. I don't know why he called it the Australian cash store. He was in Africa. I have no idea. Absolutely none. I wish I knew. It's those little bits of information that inform the present. I wish I knew. I really wish I knew. I lived in a house full of old leather suitcases with weird photographs of people that I'd never met, who I would never meet, who I got a glimpse of, but I knew nothing about them. That would have enriched my knowledge of who I am. I don't have that. I don't have it. And I think that culture works something like that. It's lots of little strands which together become incredibly strong and powerful. But if those strands start to break, the rope breaks. I did that little diagram for some work that I did on the Benaki Museum at the height of the crisis. And what I said is, on the left-hand side, incredibly strong is the glory of the distant past. It's there. In fact, sometimes it's a very heavy weight on our shoulders. There's much to live up to many times. Over here is the wretchedness of the present. I remind you this is the crisis in Greece that I'm talking about. And following from that is the fear of the future. In the middle, there's what I call the fading memory of the in-between. And that's where the rope breaks. The distant past is indelible. It's the not-so-distant past, which is fragile. And that's a paradox, but it's true. Another quote from that article by Simon Critchley. He says, in order to recall something, one has to identify a locus, either in the interior palace of one's memory or by constructing an exterior physical memory theater. Various attempts to build such memory theaters punctuate antiquity. It's a practice picked up again in the Italian Renaissance and continuing to the architect architecture of Elizabethan theater, like Shakespeare's Globe and beyond. This whole notion of a memory theater, which allows memory to play, is quite remarkable. And I thought about that. This building is a memory theater. It's a remarkable memory theater. When you look up and you see this incredible needle going up towards this incredible roof with the light coming in. It's a memory theater. It provokes memory. It provokes interest in stuff. That too is a memory theater. The Zephyros program. And not just for academics, just for curious, ordinary curious people. And who knows where that evolves. That's a fantastic memory theater. Imagine a virtual trip into the past. Feasible. Now there's a project for the future. <coughs> Understanding the past informs the present and it illuminates the future. It's past, it's present, and it's future, and it's one continuous thing. That's my company. Um, it's a brand consultancy based in Athens. I do a lot of work around the world. I do work for some big corporations, for some small corporations. I do a lot of work with startups. And from time to time, I get to do amazing stuff with people like Sylvia and the Sylvia Ioannou Foundation. 
and I'm very thankful for that. So that's Sylvia, the Sylvia Yuanu Foundation logo, but you might have noticed some things changed. Anybody notice the change? No? Okay, let me show you. First of all, where does that owl come from? That little owl belongs to the school magazine, right? <laughs> at the Pan at Pan Cyprian School. And this is very dear to Sylvia. Am I right, Sylvia? Yes. It's part of your history. It's part of your past. It's, it's, it's part of your memory. It's a very strong part of your memory. That's why it's there. It's part of the logo. It's part of Sylvia. So that over there was extracted from there, and there's this wonderful spiral around it, okay? So what we did is just update the owl very slightly. It took a lot of arm twisting with Sylvia to do that, believe me. It wasn't easy, but we did it. Right, Dora? Puni Dora. Dora's work. Pia Dora. <laughs> So what does this mean? The owl is all about wisdom. Wisdom, right at the center of it. And around that is peace and understanding. And around that is the spiral, growth from within. So let's just look a little deeper. We've just heard about this amazing Zephyros program, but what I've learned is that people don't really buy what you do. They buy why you do it. They buy why you do it. There's a remarkable video on YouTube by this fellow over here called Simon Sinek. If you haven't seen it, have a look at it. It's quite remarkable. And what he does is he talks about a thing called the golden circle. He says, everybody knows what they do. Some people can talk about how they do it. Very few can express why they do it. And he says that's the most powerful thing. Start with why. So let's look at the why of the Sylvia Yuanu Foundation. I remember sitting down having long, wonderful chats, really human, wonderful chats, with Sylvia, with the people at the foundation, with Artemis, and asking all sorts of questions. And I want to share some of the answers with you because they're quite remarkable. <laughs> I said to Sylvia, why did you start collecting books and maps? And she said to me, I wanted to safeguard and protect our history and our heritage. She told me this was the time of the invasion. She was afraid that history might disappear, that memory wouldn't just fade, it would be erased. She wanted to safeguard our history and our heritage. I said, well now, why do you want to, what's this all about? Why do you want, it's your collection, why do you want to spread it? She said, I wanted to share the knowledge and inspiration of the past. In other words, on the left hand side, and, and this, I kind of made that circle, and I saw on the left-hand side, I love my origins. There's love for our origins, love for topos on the one side. And on the other side is love for humanity. I love to share. But there's real love sitting inside there. And whoever knows Sylvia knows that that is true. And then she fell in love with this photograph, <laughs> which I think is beautiful. A little kid playing with an iPad. And that was a natural. That came from there. It's for all of us. It's not mine. It's for all of us. It's our knowledge. It's our past. It's our inspiration. That's the why. It's for all of us. So, let's dig a little deeper. I then looked at this spiral, and I started thinking, what's this spiral all about? Okay. And I realized it's all about growth from within, because the spiral just continues to expand. Gnothi safton, as the ancients used to say. 
And when we think of growth, we think of it that way, that things become progressively bigger. Nature knows better. That's what growth looks like. And it starts from the middle. That, as some of you may know, is the Fibonacci series, which you find everywhere in nature. You find it there. You find it on a cactus plant. You find it in the way that a rose expands and grows. You find it throughout nature. You find it in this building. That's a photograph of a staircase in this building. And if you look at the form of this building, look at that. It's all circular stuff. It's all growth. It's all expansive. Look at that. It's beautiful. And look at that. Stunning. But that kind of stuff also exists in the universe. That's what growth is all about, the spiral. So, things that powerful brands have to do is manifest their why. Is to really make it clear why they do what they do. And they usually do that in a manifesto. And here's the manifesto that we created for the Sylvia Iwanu Foundation. When the love you feel for where you've come from becomes a private collection of knowledge, information, and memory, it needs to be shared to become an open inheritance and an accessible source of inspiration for all humanity. Because it's the past that informs the present and illuminates the future. It's for all of us. So it makes it terribly clear. It makes it terribly clear. But these kind of statements must be honest. Because if you can't live by them, they become lies. I know that the foundation lives with that. I know that. So that becomes a manifesto. That's a possible piece of communication for all humanity. That photograph, by the way, is taken at a school in South Africa called Saheti, which is a Greek language school. I'm on the board of that school. It's a phenomenal institution. Started by George Bezos, who was the, um, the lawyer to the attorney to Nelson Mandela. Remarkable man. Black kids, Greek kids, all sorts of kids there. And of course, Sylvia's favorite little kid. <laughs> You're gonna see a lot of him. So when the love you feel for where you've come from becomes a private collection of knowledge, information, and memory, it needs to be shared to become an open inheritance and an accessible source of knowledge and inspiration for all humanity, because it's the past that informs the present and illuminates the future. It's for all of us. Show me a person who's never Googled an X, and I'll show you a person without an internet connection. It's remarkable how this word Google has become a verb in every single language around the world. Right? We all use it. Google. Tase googlaro, leme. But I grew up with that. There was no Google. The Encyclopedia Britannica. Remember that? Standard feature in our lives. Homework to do, where's the encyclopedia? We're all digital migrants. We've migrated off that, and we've moved into the world, into the digital world. Sylvia's little kid is a digital native. He knows nothing else. This is his world. And if we can't produce the kind of tools that he's going to want to use, he's not going to use them. He'll be playing video games. We have an absolute need to create beautiful, wonderful, simple, exciting tools which share the past. Because if we don't do that, we're damaging the future. Now imagine a searchable, interactive, digital platform, home to the world's leading collections, not just the Sylvia Yuanu foundations, collections, home to the world's leading collections. 
open to the world's knowledge seekers, not just students and scholars, anybody who wants to find out stuff, like why on earth my grandfather called his store the Australian cash store. Maybe I'll find the answer there. A place to explore, discover, and share. A place accessible to all, because it's for all of us. And that's really the bigger ambition. A memory theater. A memory theater. A place you want to visit for great experiences. A memory theater. Now, we wanted to get a name for this. And here, I always go back to Shakespeare. A rose by any other name would smell as sweet. That's a stupid name for a computer company. Imagine if I proposed to you, well, let's just call it banana. You'd say you're nuts. Well, these guys were nuts. That over there was the original, that's the original Apple logo, right? When these were a couple of kids in California smoking dope on the beach and playing around with electronics, right? And around the side it says, Newton, a mind forever voyaging through strange seas of thought alone. Yeah? But that's the DNA of Apple. That's where the name comes from. The apple falling onto Newton's head. Anybody tell me what that is? That's called a Google. A Google, actually. 10 to the power of 100. Which some mathematician in the United States asked his kid, what's the biggest number you can imagine? And his kid said, 10 to the power of 100. He said, what are you going to call it? He said, a Google. So that's where the name Google comes from. One of the world's best brands. Smuckers. Smuckers is a jam in the United States. And their slogan is exactly that. With a name like Smuckers, it's got to be good. Well, you've got big problems. <laughs> so, let's look at this memory theater. What's it all about? It's about inspiration. It's about inspiring people. And the, the word inspire means to fill someone with the urge or ability to do or feel something, especially to do something creative. So the this, this sense of inspire is important over here. By the way, this word translates into many languages, um, except Russian, I don't think is there. No, it's not. A couple of others are not there, but it translates, it translates into a lot of languages, so it's universal, which is important. We've got a spiral at the heart of the logo, I remind you. So we wanted to try to work with that as well. And we've got the sense of it's for all of us, sharing with all humanity. So that's what we need to convey. Yeah? So here's the name. In Spiral. Inspire. Spiral. All. In Spiral. And we managed to get the domain, <laughs> which is always the biggest problem. And that's the logo for the new platform. Of course, it's got the spiral and very simple, in spiral, in spiral, call it what you want. And that's what our site will be looking like. And you'll notice what I've put at the top. Interactive geographic legacy projects from the world's leading collections. Explore, discover, share. And at the bottom is something that reminds you of a Google search thing. In other words, whatever you want, you're going to find it. Okay? Underneath it's got sections. For now it's in Spiral Cyprus, which is Zephyros, Kitchener, plus others coming soon. So that's Cyprus. But it rapidly moves to Greece with the addition of Kimolos and a couple of other um, destinations, places. And the dream is that it moves beyond by partnering with some of the world's greatest collections. So there'd be Cyprus, there'd be Greece, there'd be New York, There'd be Australia, and of course, there'd be South Africa. <laughs> so that's really the bigger vision, right? And it starts with the 
this kind of thinking. When the love you feel for where you've come from becomes a private collection of knowledge, information, and memory, it needs to be shared to become an open inheritance and an accessible source of knowledge and inspiration for all humanity because it's the past that informs the present and illuminates the future. It's for all of us. And it goes straight back to that. It's for all of us. Thank you very much indeed. It's great to be here. And I want to thank you on behalf of that kid. I don't know who he is, but it's a great shot. But he represents the future. So thank you very much indeed. Я ευχαριστώ τον κύριο Οικονομίδη για την ομιλία του και με προσωπικές αναμνήσεις και ιδέες που, που είναι γενναίες και εμπνέουν. Ευχαριστώ πάρα πολύ και με την ομιλία του κύριου Οικονομίδη ε, κλείνουμε τα μπαζούρια και τη σημερινή συνεδρία ως αύριο το πρωί. Ευχαριστώ.